بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه أحلي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قول أما بعد All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the prophet and the messenger of Allah and I ask Allah azza wa jal to make us from amongst those in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon in this world and the hereafter in particular that moment that Allah Azza wa Jal takes our soul away from this dunya my brothers and my sisters continuing on death and the hereafter series a series that I ask Allah Azza wa Jal it enters the heart and the mind of every single Muslim and every single listener and I ask Allah Azza wa Jal that not only we understand and contemplate what we hear, but we act upon what we hear. As it's pointless just for me to know and not act upon what I know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to act upon what we believe in and what we know. And Allah azza wa jal says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon, kabura maqtan inda Allahi an taquluna ma la taf'aloon. All those who believe, why do you say what you do not act upon? It is a major sin for you that you say what you do not act upon. And I ask Allah Azza wa Jal that we do say and act upon what we say. And act upon what we learn. And act upon what we have knowledge of. Last week we spoke about the dunya and our existence in this dunya and the purpose of our existence in this dunya. And I repeat an important verse in the Holy Quran in Surah Tabarak where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا He is the one that created death and life to test you to see who is the best of dua. So my existence on the surface of this earth is a test. When I die, it's also a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to test us not only in this dunya but even while we are dying and after our death, and that's something insha'Allah you know about tonight. We are talking about death and we are coming up to death now. What happens when someone dies? What are the processes of death? What are the agonies of death? What are the punishments of death? What are the joys of death? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Allah azza wa jal strengthens. He strengthens his believers with the best and the strong word in this dunya and the hereafter, in this world and the hereafter. And Allah Azza wa Jal misguides those who are misguided. This is what you need. To be strengthened by Allah. Because no strength will help you and support you in this world, in particular in the hereafter, except the strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Death. Death, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, a reality of all realities. A reality that no one can escape from and no one can run away from. And death will catch up on every single one of us, regardless who you are. Death does not recognize how powerful you are. Death does not recognize how influential you are. Death does not recognize how prestige you are. Death does not recognize your powers Death does not recognize your real leadership. Death comes to everyone. And that moment that Allah Azza wa Jal ordains upon His servant to die, that moment will take place and nothing will delay it, nor nothing that will postpone it. That's it. When Allah Azza wa Jal ordains upon, upon this person to die, at that time, at that particular place, it will take place and nothing will turn it away. Nothing. And absolutely nothing. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "كل نفس دائقة الموت." Every soul shall taste death. Every soul shall taste death. 
وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور الله عز وجل continues to say that the only thing that you take with you and gain are your deeds so whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes away from the hellfire and admits into the paradise had indeed succeeded had indeed won وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور Differently, definitely this life is only an enjoyment of delusion as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordains death upon everyone including his most beloved prophets and messengers including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if there's anyone that should not be tasting death if Allah Azza wa Jalla had written on anyone not to taste death or not to ever ever experience death of Rabbi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says innaka mayyitun wa innahum mayyitun verily O Muhammad you shall taste death if Allah Azza wa Jal made the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam taste death Allah will make everyone taste death and I mentioned to you last week that not only Allah Azza wa Jal writes the time that you'll die in but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also writes and decrees if Allah had written for you to die in Europe Allah will make something for you to go to Europe if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written upon you to die in Asia Allah will make something for you to go to Asia if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written for you to die in the next door room Allah azza wa make something for you to go to that room Allah ordains the time of death and the place of death وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتُ As Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, and Nasal knows where it shall die. Nasal, you don't know where you're going to die. You know when you were born and where you were born, but you don't know when you're going to die and you don't know where you're going to die. There is something called the process of death. What we know as Al-Ihtidar in Arabic. The soul doesn't just bang, comes out of the body. But there's preparation, the norm, that there is preparation for death. And usually, in most cases, people die on their deathbed, marad al maut, which a preparation for them to die. Only in particular disasters or in particular accidents, they will die. But there's always a process of death. Allah gives you that last opportunity to utter with the word of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. So it could be the word that you end your life with and you enter the paradise with. As I mentioned in last week's hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, anyone that his last word is La ilaha illallah shall enter the Jannah. Man kana akhiru kalamihi La ilaha illallah dakhala al Jannah. Whoever shall utter with the word La ilaha illallah as his last word should enter the Jannah. That's why when someone is dying, someone on his deathbed, you could see someone, he's on the bed, he's ill and he is dying. And he is farewelling last breaths of his life. The sunnah is that you stand around him and you say La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. So he could hear those words, so he could utter with those words, so they could be the last words that he utters with before he leaves this dunya. To apply the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says, whoever says, La ilaha illallah as his last words, in this dunya shall enter the paradise. Shall enter the paradise. So if someone is dead, these are the words that we should be talking about. We shouldn't be talking about football or the TV episode or where you're, where you're cooking. You should say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Even the scholars say, if he said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, then he said something else. Get me water. I want this. Where is Muhammad? Where is Fulan? The scholars said, you should again repeat, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah to make sure that the last words that he utters with is La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah until that moment comes where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all powers and strength over all his servants. وَيُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَظَةً حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ تَوَفَّتْهُ رُسُلُنَا وَهُمْ لَا يُفَرِّطُونَ And upon every single one of us, the recording angels that record everything you do, you don't live alone. The angels that record every single action that you do, for the moment that you face Allah, He is the proof and evidence. You're not alone. Don't think you're alone. Even when you think you're alone, you're not alone. You have hafadah, recorders, who record everything upon you. They see and hear and watch and listen everything you do. And they record it upon you. Until that moment, Allah says, Hatta idha jaa maut, Until that moment, death comes to one of you. Tawaffathu rusuluna, our messengers. Our messengers take their soul, وَهُمْ لَا يُفَرِّطُونَ And they do not fail in their duty. They do not fail in their duty. Allah told them to go and take this person's soul, they go and take this person's soul. They never fail. They never fail. And Allah Azza wa says, تَوَفَّتْهُ رُسُلُنَا Our messengers. Allah refers to the angel of death as messengers, which means the angel of death is not alone. He has, a soul, he has a number of angels of death under him. The angel of death is not one. Angel of death is the head of the big soldiers or the big army that he's got full of. Angels of death under him that he sends them out to take the souls of people. People ask, how could it be possible that the angel of death be at one place at, one, at the same second, within the same second, about 100 souls are taken. He's got soldiers. He's got, he's got a team. He's got an army that he sends and dispatches. He sends him to take the souls of people. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, the angel of death has access to the souls of people like how one of us eats a plate of food. You put a plate of food in front of you. You've got a pizza in front of you. You've got, you know, whatever gourmet you might have in front of you. You eat from it however you want. You eat from here. You've got your, your hands reached to ever, to ever angle or ever side of it. You eat however you want. You've got full access. You've got full control of that plate. The angel of death has full control and access to the souls of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him the access. He could reach anyone, anywhere. He could reach anyone, anywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him that powers and strength. He could reach anyone, anywhere, at any place, at any moment. And as I mentioned, he does not work alone. He's got an army. He's got a big team. He's got soldiers that all have the axes under his, under his leadership. And then he only does what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him to do. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes the process of death. And he mentions what the believers experience and what the non-believers experience. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself experienced that. And during that process of death while the soul is coming out, it's a very, very painful moment. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, as Aisha narrates, the Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam died on my lap and he was putting his hands, he was putting his hand into a cup of water wiping over his forehead and he continues to say ah inna lil mawti la sakarat ah woe to the death and the process of death is very painful the process of death is very painful that moment that allah azza wa jal wants to take you out of this dunya and put you into the world of barzakh that i told you about before that transition is a very painful transition. Not as smooth as you might think. But it's a lot more smooth, a lot more smoother to the believer than the disbeliever. But it's tough. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ah, oh, wow, ouch! To the process of death. And that's Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He felt the pressure. He felt the pain, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He felt the agony, alayhi salatu wasalam. 
And that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to always remind the companions of death. Al-Bara ibn Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu details in one hadith about what happens to the believers and the non-believers. Where he says, one day we buried one of our companions. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made us gather around the grave and he gave us a sermon, a mawida, a reminder on, of death. And then he says, talking about the believer and the non-believer. What happens to them? What happens to the believer when he dies? What happens to the non-believer when he dies? He says, alayhi salatu wa salam, beginning with the believer describing him, إِذَا كَانَ فِي انْقِطَاعٍ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَإِقْبَالٍ عَلَى الْآخِرَةِ He says, when a believer, when a believer dies, and then he describes that believer. What does he describe him? He is the one that was so attached to the hereafter and away from this dunya. The believer is the one that was attached to the akhirah. His heart is with the akhirah. His heart is with Allah. His heart is with the paradise. All he thinks about is what he's going to harvest in the paradise. Wa in qita'an an al akhirah. He's not attached to this dunya. He's not attached to the dollar. He's not attached to the world. He's not attached to the prestige. All he cares about is the pleasure of Allah upon him in this world and the pleasure of Allah upon him in the hereafter. He says, alayhi salatu was salam, that believer, when that time comes for him, when that time comes for the believer to die, the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, he says, angels will descend down from the heavens. And the Nabi, alayhi salatu was salam, describes those angels that descend down from the heavens, how they look to the believer. They're not always with the same looks. They come in a very peaceful, good look into the believer, very aggressive and scary and terrifying look to the non-believer. He says when the believer dies, angels descend down from the heavens. White faces, their faces are very white like a glowing sun. Very peaceful. You know, this is a very, very scary moment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to comfort the believers. That what? That worshipped him in this dunya and cared about his pleasure in this dunya and the hereafter. Angels descend down from the heavens. White faces. Their faces are glowing like a sun. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, they carry with them shrouds. They carry, the angels carry with them shrouds. He's already been shrouded in this dunya, but he's getting shrouded with the, in this dunya with the shrouds of this dunya, but these angels come down with shrouds from the paradise. Angels with beautiful faces, glowing faces, like a glowing sun, descend down to the believer with shrouds from the paradise. And they come with hanut. They come with implement hanut from the paradise to comfort this believer and to give it that he could think of. And they'll sit, as the Prophet ﷺ says, they'll sit as far his sight can see. They don't come to him at once, they come to him slowly to comfort him. This difference when someone just pops in your face. And someone eventually just comes closer to you, it comforts you. This is the comfort that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to comfort the believer in while he's dying. Then the angel of death will come. Then the angel of death will come and he'll sit above his head or near his head. And the angel of death now, his job is to take the soul. The angel of death's job now is to take that soul. While he's taking that soul, he says, Ya ayyatuha nafsu tayyiba, ukhruji, ukhruji, ukhruji ila maghfiratin min Allahi wa ridwan. Oh, this beautiful and pure soul, come out, come out, come out in the forgiveness of Allah and His pleasure. Allahu Akbar, how beautiful is that? How comforting is that to the believer? Oh, all believing 
believing soul, all pure soul, all good soul, all believing soul, come out. Come out. To where? To the forgiveness of Allah and the mercy of Allah. Come out to a Lord that's pleased from you. Come out to a Lord that's looking forward to meet you. Come out to the Lord that wants to forgive you. Come out. This is the words that the angel of death will say to the believing soul. Not the disbeliever, not the wicked one, the believing soul. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, he'll take it out so smooth. He'll take it out so easy. Like how a drop of water will come out of a bottle. So easy. And that's how he takes it out. Very smooth. But it's still pain. But not as painful as the other. There's still some agony. But not as the other. But this is how smooth it is to the believing soul. And then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he says, when the angel of death takes it, he takes it and cares about it so much, he looks after it. Like how one of us carries something so valuable, carries his own baby, he's looking after him, does not want to drop him, does not want his eyesight to, you know, to be taken away from him. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the angel of death will take that soul and he'll look after it. He does not even take his eyes away from it. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the angel of death would not take his eyes away from this good believing soul. And then he puts it in those shrouds from where? From the paradise. Shrouds from the paradise. And puts the implement on it, the hanut from the paradise. And then will have the nicest and the most beautiful smell and fragrance, ma smell that you could ever think of. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, out of this beautiful, out of this believing pure soul, this soul that only worshipped Allah and obeyed Allah, it would have a beautiful mask smell, more nicer than any fragrance on the surface of this earth. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You hear this and you start looking forward to death. But are we from amongst those who are pleasing Allah? As the Prophet ﷺ says, in qita'im min dunya wa idbaran ala al-akhirah, wanting that he after ever this dunya, he comes out and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, beautiful mask smell, more nicer than any smell or fragrance or perfume that you could ever think of on the surface of this earth. And then all the angels will start smelling this beautiful mask smell. All the angels start to smell this mask smell. They start asking, who's that? What's this beautiful smell? What's this beautiful perfume? What's this beautiful fragrance? And then they start to call it with the best of names they used to be called. It is Fulan with a nice name. It is Abu Fulan. It is the generous man. It is this noble man. It is this believer. They'll call it with the best of names. The best of names that he loved to be called in this dunya. Where people call you Abu Fulan or people call you generous brother, good looking brother. People call you, you're a good believer. So the angels start to call this soul, this believing soul that the angel of death has taken away from this dunya. They start to call it with the best of names. And asking, where's this beautiful perfume from? What a nice smell. What a nice fragrance. And they take it up and elevate it to the heavens. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, and all the angels that this soul goes past, they'll all unite and assemble around it. What a beautiful soul, believing soul. This is the soul of this person that used to remember Allah. This is the soul of this person that used to pray to Allah. This is the soul of this person that used to fight for Allah. This is the soul of this person that used to build mosques for Allah. This is the person that used to call to Allah. This is the soul of this person that used to do good. So the angels start to assemble around it, gather around it, until they reach to the first heaven. When they reach to the first heaven, the angel of death will ask the angels of the first heaven to admit them into the first heaven. Allow us to enter. So the angels of the first heaven will give the full permission to the angel of death and the rest of the angels to accompany this beautiful soul into the first heaven. And continues to elevate and elevate to the second heaven and third heaven and fourth heaven until they reach to the seventh heaven. And there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Uktubu kitaba abdi min 
write and record the records of my servant from Iliyin, from the most elite of the believers, from the best of people. Record upon my servant the records of Iliyin. And what's Iliyin? Iliyin from the elite of the servants of Allah, the elite of the believers, and take him back to earth. That's it. His place is on earth. And Allah says, take him back to earth. From it as earth, from the earth I had created him from. And from the earth I shall return him to. And from earth I'll resurrect him again. Minha khalaqtuhum wa fiha u'iduhum wa minha ukhrijuhum taratan ukhra take take my servant or take him back to earth from earth I had created them from earth I shall bring them back and from earth or from earth I should return them to or from earth I should resurrect them then this soul will come down from the seventh heaven from the seventh heaven to the body in the grave that's what happens when someone dies until he is buried in the grave that soul reaches to the seventh heaven if it's a good soul and then once it's put into the grave it goes back to it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands it to go back to it the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says and then it will be taken back to earth and will be put back into its body alayhi salatu was salam he then he says when he is buried and they've laid down the sand and the dust on him and everyone had walked away from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says two angels will come to him now he's in the grave alone he looks towards his right there's only the dust he looks towards his left there's only the worms in front of him is darkness around him is darkness where are the friends no more friends where are the family no more families where is the wealth and where is the beautiful houses and cars there's nothing now you're alone now you are alone the only thing that you have are your deeds nothing else nothing else except your deeds whether they good deeds or bad deeds two angels will come munkar and nakir nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says they'll wake him up he's in that state wake up or oh, the servant of allah wake up or oh, the servant of allah and they ask him in a very very polite and gentle way to comfort him wake up or oh, the servant of allah and they'll wake him up and sit him up as the prophet muhammad sallallahu says they'll sit him up they'll come to him in a peaceful looking angels the angels then come to everyone, the angels of death and Munkar and Nakir, those two angels, then come with the same appearance to everyone. The good believers, they come with a good comforting appearance. The disbelievers or the disobedience, they come to them with a very terrifying and scary look. Now they come to the believer, wake up. So he, the, he wakes up, they'll sit him up and then they'll ask him three questions. Think about them. Three questions. What are those three questions? Marabbuk. Who's your Lord? Madinak. What's your religion? Madha taqul fi rajul alladhi bu'itha ilayk. And what do you say about the man that was sent to you? Three questions. Marabbuk. Who's your Lord? Madinak, what's your religion? And what do you say about the man that was sent to you or sent within you? Three questions. Very simple for us to answer now. Ask anyone, and anyone will answer. Ask a two year old Muslim, he'll answer. 
But I want to tell you one thing, my brother and my sister in Islam. At that time, it's not the tongue that speaks. It's your heart that will speak. What the heart is full of, is what the heart will utter with. So if the heart was full of the love of Allah, then the heart will say, my Lord is Allah. If the heart was full of the love of Islam, then the heart will say, and my religion is Islam. And if this heart was full of the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then this heart will say, and the man that was sent to us is our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Three questions. مَنْ رَبُّكْ وَمَا دِينَكْ وَمَاذَا تَقُولْ فِي الرَّجُلِ الَّذِي بُعِثَ إِلَيْكُمْ أَوْ فِيكُمْ Who is your Lord? What's your religion? And what do you say about the man that was sent to you or amongst you? At that moment is what the heart says and speaks. So the believer will say, My Lord is Allah and my religion is Islam. And my Prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At that moment, a caller will call from the heavens. A caller will call from the heavens. That says, Sadaqa abdi, Sadaqa abdi, Fafrishuhu min al-jannah, Wa albisuhu min al-jannah, Waftahu lahu baban ila al-jannah. That what my servant had said is the truth. So cover him from the covers of the paradise and clothe him from the clothes of the paradise and open a door for him to the paradise. The one that says, my Lord is Allah, my religion is Islam, and my prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I call or call from the heavens. Allah will call from the heavens and will say, my servant has said the truth. So cover him from the covers of the paradise. Clothe him from the clothes of the paradise and open a door for him to the paradise. Allah, how beautiful is that? So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, at that moment, the doors of the paradise will open to him and then he could smell the beautiful fragrance and beautiful smell from the paradise. And he could feel the beautiful breeze of the paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open for him the grave as far as he could see. So he could comfort himself. Allah will open the paradise for him as wide as he could see. So he could comfort himself. And then... A man will appear to him. A man will appear to him. Very good looking. Very handsome face. Very beautiful fragrance. So this believer will see this beautiful looking handsome and good looking man with beautiful fragrance. He says to him, Who are you, Allah? You look like a man with good news. Who are you? You look like a man with good news. So he replies back to him and he says, Abshir billadhi yasurra. Glad tidings to you with the goodness that you want. I am your good actions. Allahu Akbar. I am your good actions. I am coming to protect you today. I am coming to you from Allah to give you the good news for what you comforts you and makes you happy. So this believing soul, this believing man, this believing woman will say, Rabbi aqim al-sa'ah, Rabbi aqim al-sa'ah, hatta arji ala ahli wa mali. Oh Allah, let the day of judgment take place now. Let the day of judgment take place now. Let me go back to my family and wealth and tell them the goodness that you had prepared for me and you given me. Whom is that? The believer. Who is the believer? In the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the one that his heart was attached to the Akhirah, to the hereafter. He's preparing for what? For the hereafter. Preparing for what? For the Jannah. And this dunya to him is only a bridge that he lives over. Only a bridge that he walks over. Not living here forever, as he understood what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Oh Allah! Let the day of judgment happen now. Let it take place now. Let me go back to my family. I will tell them what you had prepared for me. So happy. So happy. So happy for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prepared for him. 
On the other hand, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes and tells us what the disbeliever goes through in the same hadith. In the same hadith. He tells us what the disbeliever goes through when he dies. He says, alayhi salatu was salam, describing the disbeliever, إِذَا كَانَ فِي إِقْبَالٍ عَلَى الدُّنْيَا وَإِنْقِطَاعٍ مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ The disbeliever is the one that's so attached to this dunya and drifted away from the, from the hereafter. He so attached to this world and he turned his back on the paradise. So attached to this world and turned his back on what Allah Azza wa Jal had prepared for the believers in the paradise. He says, alayhi salatu was salam, angels will descend down from the heavens to take his soul. What's the description of those angels in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He says, black and dark faces. So terrifying and scary. The disbeliever, the one that disbelieved in Allah, disobeyed Allah, had no time for Allah. When his time comes, Allah will send angels from the heavens to take his soul. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, their faces is so dark and black. And what's with them? Sackcloth made from the fire, garments made from the fire, rough clothes made from the fire. And then they'll see, as far as could see. At that moment, the angel of death will come, suddenly, terrifying him. And he says to him, without any preparation, without any comfort, Ya nafsul khabitha, ukhruji. Oh wicked soul, oh you wicked soul, come out, come out to the anger and the wrath of your Lord. Come out, come out, oh dirty, filthy, wicked soul, come out to where? To the anger of your Lord, to the punishment of your Lord, to the wrath of your Lord. You think you could do whatever you want in this dunya? And take your comfort to do whatever you want to do. That moment you're going to pay the price. Oh wicked soul, come out to the anger and the wrath of your Lord. Come out to the punishment of your Lord. So the soul, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, starts to run into the body, starts to escape, trying to run away from death. So the angel of death will grab it. The angel of death will grab it and snitch it out or snatch it out he'll grab it and snatch it out of the body tear it apart from the body how there is a stick a stick or a thorn stuck in a wool and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says like how there is a stick or a thorn stuck in a wool what happens when you try to take it out you take it out with some wool on it in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, the moment the angel of death comes, and he says, all oh, will be distributed in the body. Run away. So snatch it out, rip it apart from the body. Takes it so roughly and aggressively. Like how there is a thorn in a wool. When you take it out, what happens? You take some wool out with it. Very painful. Very painful. And then he'll take it and he'll keep his eyes on it. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, and then we'll be shrouded with the clothes and the garments from the hellfire. The punishment already began. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, he says, a disgusting rotten smell will come out of this soul. That the angels will start smelling this disgusting, rotten smell. And they say, to whom is disgusting, rotten smell? To whom does it belong to? So they say, it's for Fulan. This disbeliever. This disobedient person. And they will call him with the worst of names he used to be called on the surface of this earth. 
They'll call him with the most disgusting names that used to be called on the surface of this earth. And then it will be elevated to the first heaven while all the angels are disgusted from it. While all the angels are running away from it, from its disgusting, disturbing smell. They'll go with it to the first heaven and they'll ask the angels of the first heaven for admission so the angels of the first heaven will reject them. And say to them, you are not welcomed here with this soul. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command that soul to be casted. To be thrown back to earth. To its body while it's in the grave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Uktubu kitabahum min fi sijjin. Fil ardi sufla. Record the records of my servant in sijjin. In one of the places of the hellfire, in the lowest bottom part of the hellfire of the world. Record the records of my servant in Sijin and cast him to the lowest bottom of the, of, the, of the earth. And while he's in that state, two angels will come to him, like the two angels that came to the believer before him. And they'll wake him up. Wake up. Wake up, dirty soul. Wake up, disbeliever. Wake up, all disobedient person. Wake up. So he wakes up terif terrified. Wakes up so terrified and scared. So they'll ask him with aggression. They'll ask him so rough. And their faces are so scary. They'll say to him exactly what they asked the previous believer before him. Who is your Lord? What's your religion? And what do you say about the man that was sent to you? So what does he say? He says, La Adri, I don't know who's my Lord. I don't know what's my religion. I don't know which man you're talking about. Marabbak. Who is your Lord? I don't know. What's your religion? I don't know. What do you say about the man that was sent amongst you? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call from the heavens. And My servant is a liar. My servant is a liar. So I cover him with the covers of the hellfire and clothe him with the clothes and the garments of the hellfire and open to him a door to the hellfire. So a door will open in front of him from the hellfire and a hot, a very hot boiling breeze will come to him so he could feel the breeze on his body. That's in the grave, not yet. He hasn't entered the hellfire yet. He's only experiencing something in the grave. A door from the hellfire will open. So a boiling hot breeze will come to him. Attacking him. And he feels. He feels the punishment of the hellfire while he's in the grave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal will tighten the grave on him. That will squash his own ribs together the believer allah azza wa jal opened the grave for him as far as you could see so he could live in comfort but the disbeliever the disobedient allah azza wa jal will squash him inside his grave and let his ribs enter with one another subhanallah and while he's in that punishment and while he is in that aggression while he is punished and yet he hasn't entered the hellfire while he's in that terrifying state and his ribs had crushed with one another a man with a very very ugly looking face with a very very terrifying appearance will appear to him so look at him and I'll say to him, Wallahi, your face is so ugly. And only carries bad news. So he says to him, Yes, 
I'm here to tell you with the worst of things that you want to ever hear at this time. I am your bad actions. I'm your bad deeds. I'm your bad actions. I am your bad deeds. I am the haram they used to commit. I am the drugs they used to take. I am those women they used to sleep with haram. I am the clubs they used to go to. I am the riba they used to take. I am the money they used to take from people. I am the oppression they used to oppress people. I'm, the, I'm your lies. I'm your deception. I'm your bad deeds. I'm your bad actions. And Allah had promised you for this day. So he starts to look and realize why he had put himself in. So he says, Rabbir Jian, Ya Rabb, oh Allah, bring me back into life. And I'll do exactly what you wanted. I'll pray, I'll fast, I'll never disobey you, I'll never go to clubs, I'll never take drugs, I'll never take riba, I'll never steal, I'll never lie, I'll never do this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, Kalla, nay, that's it. Kalla, we've written upon you one death and you've tasted it. So when he sees all that, he says, Rabbi, la taqum is oh my Lord, then let the day of judgment come. If yet, the day of judgment has not even came yet, and I'm getting punished all this punishment, what would happen when I enter the hellfire? Rabbi la taqum is Rabbi la taqum is oh Allah, do not let the day of judgment take place. Do not let the day of judgment take place. While the other believer is saying, Rabbi Aqim is Sah, oh Allah, let the day of judgment take place. Let me go back to my family and my people and my world and tell them what you had prepared for me. Let me enter the paradise. The believer, the one that was always chasing behind the pleasure of Allah. Well, the disbeliever does not care and does not even comprehend that moment that he'll die. Oh, 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 o